So before I start blocking, a lot of times I'll uh, kind of get a few blocks ready that I that I think I'm going to use in the particular area. So I'm going to basically just kind of block this whole side and see what we've got. So I'm going to start with a, probably a 32 inch flex and block this door into this fender and panel to panel, and we're gonna we're gonna really block this big, long, wide area from here all the way down the corridor. Is pretty, you know. There's a little bit of a hip at the corridor, but from the back of the door to about the middle of the fender is is uh, you know it's not completely flat. It's got a little bit of an arch, but it's pretty well straight. So I'm gonna use a lot of the 32 inch flex there. And, you know, as I get down in this area, I might use this 24 inch flex. And as I get up into this area of the front of the car, I might start using the 18 inch flex. So I'm actually going to start blocking this with 180 just because it's uh, it's a pretty nice car. The metal work is pretty nice and we're going to, if we don't have to get real aggressive, then we don't want to get real aggressive, which I'm sure we will later. But for now, we're going to, we're going to start with 180 and, and just kind of see what we've got going on. So now that I've done my initial block down this side of this car, um, you can see, you know, our panel to panel isn't really amazing. Uh, it's okay on the fender, it's, it's actually pretty good, but the way that this corner sweeps into this door, this is just about on any car, anytime you have the, the hip of the quarter panel kind of sweeping back into the door, this is always can be a tricky area. To, to work and to get straight because it's not straight, if that makes sense. This whole, this is all one big curve in here. So depending on the car, it would depend if you're going to use, say, a ultra flex or a flex block here, you might use a combination of the two. But what I'm gonna do now is all my low spots, I'm gonna, before I prep them for filler, I'm gonna, uh, take a number two pencil and I'm going to circle all my low spots and then I'm going to come through and sand that because once once you sand it if I just went through and sanded all this you kind of lose your map you lose your map of your lows so I like to use the number two pencil circle these areas come back prep them and then you know the areas that you need to put filler or glaze or whatever you're going to use in so even after just a little bit of blocking, you can see that there's plenty of work to be done on this thing. There's, it's not perfect. And a lot of this stuff, you know, but just by rubbing your hand on it, it's, it's not a lot of stuff that you necessarily feel. And that's, that's one key thing with the linear blocks is, is the flatness factor and how they will form to a panel the pressure distribution this this tube is more than just a handle that is really the whole that's what really makes the block work the way it does is the the depth of the cuts and the spacing and and the pressure distribution on your hands you know when you when you block um if i'm blocking uh say i'm blocking something like the front of this car if i have a just a piece of plexiglass or something like that or if I have a block that has just uh, no option for hand placement, if there's just two grips here and here, or or uh, whatever the case is, you you start bending that block and you're putting all the pressure right here. You're not you're not putting the pressure out here so much because you are flexing the block against the car. You're using the car to stop the block. You have a lot of leverage when you're blocking like this. So that's one reason the two, you can, you can space your hands out better and the, the vertebrate design, we call it, it helps you distribute the pressure evenly to the base of the block. And by doing that, it doesn't allow the block to say, sag into this low that's, that's right here between this door and this fender. Both of these panels dive in just a slight bit. I mean, not, 
not anything that you really notice looking down the side, but when you take something that is gonna form to a true shape, that's when you pick up all this little stuff. Like these are, you know, bigger areas, you can feel that. But there's a couple things like this little one here and this one and this one. When I rub my hand on that, I can feel the difference in the texture because this is sanded and this isn't. But as far as a dent, I can't really even feel that. So, you know, these will show you a lot that maybe your hand is missing. So now that I've got this car, um, I've got a good section of this car. The would actually be the passenger side of this car. Uh, the left side of this car, I've got pretty well blocked out, finished out to 80 grit. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna guide coat my whole area from, from the tail light up to the headlight grill area. Basically, I'm gonna guide coat this entire side and I'm gonna block it with 180. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start blocking this out with 180 and you this will show you a lot of things where um, some guys would have this finished out to 180 not use any guide coat they just, they just finish this out to 180 and prime it and end up repriming because they find things in the primer that you might have to put some filler here or you got a high spot here or whatever the case is so <clears throat> What this step is going to do is help eliminate another step later. This guide coating this whole side and blocking it again is essentially like priming it and blocking it again because you're going to see all the same stuff. If you have a low spot, a high spot, uh, a deep scratch, you're going to find it with the guide coat. And I like to use the powder guide coat, especially for this step where you're refining scratches because that powder you can, you literally rub it in and, and any pinholes, any deep scratches, you're going to see them and they're not going to go away until, until they're gone. So I'll talk a little bit about what blocks I use where on certain shapes of this car. Uh, I see a lot of people posting with their blocks that, uh, you know, they'll use say an ultra flex block where you maybe should use a flex block and will the ultra flex work yeah it'll work but it won't work like it like it should for that specific shape so a shape like this fender it's it's not flat it's got a little bit of a curve to it some guys would take the ultra flex block and block that and that will work but you're gonna have to be a lot more finesse with it this block is designed to bend. And when you bend it slightly, it will have more give, I'll say, than when you have it bent to a shape that it's designed to be used for. So as I bend this block over, if I'm gonna use it here, as I bend it, it gets, it becomes more rigid at a certain point to where it's it wants to hold this certain shape. And that's why we have flex and ultra flex. So the flex block is less flexible. That's what I would choose for this particular shape because it is just a crown. I'll say it's, it's very minutely curved. So that's where I would use a flex block. You don't want a block to rock. If you, if I took a, I don't even have any rigid blocks on my, in my area right now because I've, I don't think there's a spot on this car that I'll use a rigid block because everything is curved. But if I took, if this was a 24 inch rigid and I put it on there and it rocks, then then that's too rigid. You, you need a block that, that curves to the shape that you're working with. So where do I use which blocks? So <clears throat> for example, this hood to fender panel to panel, I use this 24 inch flex to go along the shape of the hood up into this shape of the fender. Another thing that a lot of people don't necessarily realize is you can use this block backwards. You can use this round handle as the block. I can block this dish of this fender like this and I still have a nice handle to grab to. I have the block side of the block I use as my handle and, and it will still flex and still work the way that it would if you use the flat set. 
So the ultra flex blocks, this is a 12 inch ultra flex, very flexible block. I like to use this around this curve right here as this, there's a slight body line right here. And right after that, it really starts to drastically roll down and I can form that block to that shape. I can block that, that shape, the, I'll say the long way or the short way. A lot of, a lot of blocks won't allow you to block a shape this direction. You would be stuck solely to this direction and you might have hard lines in your curve. And that's what the ultra flex blocks are designed to combat is, is having a choppy curve. You're going to have a uniformly shaped curve. I get some questions about the round blocks, the one inch round blocks. So this is a one inch round flex block. Uh, this is a 12 inch. And I use these blocks mainly around shapes like this fender lip. This panel is, is uh, I'll say straight, it's slightly curved, but it's a constant shape until it gets close to the wheel arch. And that wheel arch really kicks out drastically within a short range. So it's a it's a real drastic curve, similar to the shape of a one inch round tube. So there's other blocks that are round and they have a little bit of flex, but with this block, I can actually flex this block to the, the arch of the fender and use it in that shape. Rock, rock, roll it roll it up and up and down but also have it curved to the arch of this fender so like i said on this fender i used a lot of the 24 inch flex block up in this area and in from the fender to the door doing panel to panel in these areas i used a lot of 32 inch there is a slight body line on this car that starts right around here about two inches back from the wheel arch and it it <clears throat> this body line is faint and it stops. It disappears about two inches before the back here. So it's uh, it's a real tricky line and doing the guide coat that I'm gonna do is gonna is gonna really help determine where that line is and how sharp it is and what it will look like because right now everything's in filler. There's different colors all over. It's really hard to see what anything will actually look like until you get some primer on it. So this guide coat that I'm using here is a Kovac dry guide coat. And typically there's a little foam applicator pad, but what I like to do is basically flip it up, flip it upside down, turn it a few times. Now you can see there's quite a bit on my pad. And now I'm just gonna rub it in all over, down the whole entire side, everywhere that I plan to block. I'm gonna rub it in and, and make sure that, that everywhere that I'm gonna to wanna to block is covered with guide coat. Now just from a couple minutes of blocking, you can kind of see some of the stuff I'm talking about. You can see these scratches here, how how they're, those 80 grit scratches, you can see them because they're, they're full of powdered guide coat. You can see little, you know, the, the edge of this f spread of filler that didn't quite get sanded, feathered out exactly how I would want before I prime. Same here, where there's a hard line there, we just need to do some more blocking on that. And kind of the same all over. There's a little, there's little stuff all over that now we're gonna, fine tune with 180.